The Fujifilm GFX100 II camera is here and I caught up with Makoto-san and Yoneda-san to discuss about this interesting product. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from CineD and I'm here with Makoto-san who is the product planning manager and Yoneda-san who is the product planner. First of all, thank you very much guys for having me here and giving me the opportunity to ask a few questions. The GFX series of cameras is Fujifilm's medium format line. The original GFX was already introduced more than four years ago. Hmm. And now you just announced the new GFX 102. And it's so different from the original GFX 100. It's a completely different camera. And I really want to congratulate you guys for pushing again the technical boundaries. Before we dive into technology, I would like to ask Makoto-san, yes. What was the biggest challenge that you faced when designing this camera? As you know, we already have uh, two types of 100 megapixel camera, like a GFX original 100 and 100S. So these two is totally different types of like designing. So GFX 100 was uh, our flagship that includes like a vertical grip inside and the two batteries inside and uh, many you know system compatibility and uh, detachable eBay and so on. On the other hand, so two years before we launched the GFX 100S, it was you know like really compact body, in a lighter weight. So that's our that was our new challenge to develop uh, like smaller than full frame cameras as a medium format camera. Then, so after that, it's really, you know, like difficult to develop something newer. So this time we have an opportunity to develop the new sensor and new processors. Thanks to that devices make it, you know, more higher performance camera, even GFX series. So after many discussion, we decided to develop the new flagship model as a name of like GFX 102. That is uh, this product. And for you, Yonada san, what was the most challenging part when working on this new camera? Yeah, as Makoto said, the new GFX 102 has the new sensor and new processor. Uh, which has the huge capability. So the challenging thing was that how to make those uh, huge capability to into the one camera. So we we have a lot of things to want, want to do. And also sometimes we have to uh, compromise something. So it's really tough to uh, uh, make the things into one camera. To make everybody happy yeah. is very tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of you refer to a new sensor and a new processor. Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit more about this? Yes, mainly. So the number of pixels is totally the same as the yeah, last version. But the new sensor has a big capability, uh, especially about the speed, like a leading speed. So yeah, that is because we developed a new sensor uh, to you know, achieve faster speed of bleeding, not only for still like a uh, continuous shooting and so on, but also the, you know, if it's a movie production, so we need uh, 4K and 60p and the minimum rolling shutter. With no crop. No, and, and no crop, yeah. So that is, uh, you know, like aim and uh, our destination of the, this development of new sensor. And the processor is actually taken from the XH2S? Yes, totally same as the uh, XH2S and A2, T5, S20, and so on. Yeah, anyway, our processor is al already like developed for all of cameras, you know. The first model was XH2S, but uh, originally the processor was developed for the products 
that includes uh, not only X series and but also GFX series. The new GFX 102 can film up to 8K 30p, and there are so many resolutions and frame rates. If I want to shoot in the best available quality out of the box, what would you recommend? Of course, the balance speed quality is a 4K 60p because of 60p makes minimum rolling shutter, right? But uh, especially about the resolution, so you user can choose a 5.8K as a GF format, non-crop. So that is a best resolution because the more use all of horizontal pixels from the 100 megapixel. That must be, you know, highest resolution, e even with 30p or something like that. Yeah. The new camera has a three by two open gate recording possibility, but it's not in all resolutions and in all frame rates. Why is that? This is actually not open gate. Like, yeah, as you know, as you say, so like open gate is always full resolution, right? But uh, uh, this is just a, you know, one of format choice, like just a three by two and a much the uh, 35 mil format image circle. I mean, because the sensor is so big. That's, yes, that's why yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, actually, the format uses the uh, horizontally uh, 35 millimeter length of the sensor area. And uh, uh, actually, it's oversampling uh, for the uh, uh, 9500 pixels. And uh, uh, we convert it into uh, a half, then it, it will be uh, 4.8K resolution. Yoneda san, if I look at the selections of kind of image format, mm -hmm. there is GF, there is Permista. There is 35 millimeter and there is anamorphic. Can you elaborate a little bit about each format so I understand what to do with each? Actually, there are lots of the lens adapter, mount adapter for the GFX. So uh, we decided to input uh, those four formats. And uh, depending, on the, depending on the format, the uh, camera automatically switch to the uh, a which sensor area to use. So, uh, for example, the 4K of the GF format uses the uh, full width of the sensor, GFX sensor. But uh, uh, on the other hand, the 35 mm mode uh, 4K uses the uh, 35 millimeter length. So, the, depending on the format, the uh, uh, sensor area is different. When you say 35 millimeter, we're talking about film 35 millimeter, like f full frame, equivalent yeah, to yeah. full frame. Yep. Okay. Makoto-san. Yes. You have an, a new anamorphic mode, finally. There are so many options over there because there are different squeeze modes and there's also a way to squeeze within the camera. I think this is the first time ever that I see that you can actually record anamorphic, like squeezed in camera and not only de squeeze later in the editing system. Mm. Can you please run me through what is all about in this anamorphic mode? Best feature for anamorphic is uh, the camera can record in camera as a two times the squeeze inside the camera. That's a really unique point. I have never seen that kind of feature of in other cameras. Depend on our image processing, normally our processor will make it smaller for matching the, you know, selected format always. But if we can record it directly to the camera, so it already like a squeezed two times. So one engineer has that kind of idea and we talk with him, oh, that's great. So it, it already like a squeezed inside the camera. So I have never seen that. That's why you are really unique. So in order to get the best out of anamorphic mode, what would you recommend in terms of anamorphic and in terms of squeeze ratio? Normal anamorphic mode can use like uh, 1.38 by 1 aspect normally. 
and the user can choose how much this squeeze after, and uh, and you can see also the live view with uh, this squeeze selection. But uh, my recommendation is uh, this two times this squeeze to recording is already uh, keep the 8K resolution and already disqueezed. So if user can squeeze on the software, that can be like keep kept the best resolution from the 8K and then after squeezed, you can keep still the best resolution. That's my recommendation. So you recommend 8K resolution? but two times squeeze recorded in camera yeah. for best anamorphic performance of the new GFX2. Yes, and af after that, if you won't squeeze like a 1.8 times or 1.33 times or something like that, you can squeeze. On yeah. your editing software. Yeah. You know the sun. When I was playing with the menu, I saw that in some resolutions, you can use 24p and 25p. But in some resolutions, the camera is restricted to 24p only. Why is that? Actually, it's a limitation of the leading speed. So for uh, the, especially for the, uh, the higher resolution mode, like the GTI 8K and uh, uh, like the 35 millimeter open gate, such kind of uh, mode uh, can be limited to 24p due to the uh, leading speed limitation. But actually, the, uh, it is you know, best for the uh, cinema. So we believe it's really good uh, as well. No, you're right. Of course, it's best for cinema. It's just that in China and some European countries, we do work on 25p. And it looks like one frame extra. So it's like, wow, there's already a, such a small gap, but there is a, a limitation. Yeah. OK, it is what it is. <laughs> and by the way, you also decided not to do a fully articulated LCD screen in this camera. Why is that? Uh, it's, it's controversial, actually. And uh, uh, actually, we have discussed so many times which is better. But since the GFX has many fans of the photographer, after the many times discussion, we decided to take the three-way tilting, which is suitable for the uh, photographers. For the GFX 103, please have me in some of the discussions. I will try to convince you why to have a fully articulated screen as a filmmaker. What measures did you actually take in order to avoid overheating with this camera? Actually, the device is uh, put on the uh, proper position. And also the one big thing is that the uh, GFX 102 has the compatible with the fan. So with using that, the, uh, you can take the longer time of the movie. And it's working OK with the LCD being opened the way it is? It's not a problem? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it is open like this. So you can. We have the enough space to, yes, put the phone. Makoto-san, uh, previous modern cameras of Fujifilm, you always needed a grip in order to do camera to cloud recording. Mm. And this one, you don't need the grip anymore. Yeah. So what did you do here? Yeah, finally, we, can, we could develop uh, the like, IP com communication with only body. So we could incorporate the you know, Ethernet plug inside the body and also the communication protocol we used to need uh, with like a file transmitter grip. But now, finally, we can develop the only body can support that that's kind of IP or HTTP connection. Personally, I really like the idea because I do believe in camera to cloud work and when the grip is integrated, of course, it's one less thing to worry about. The X-H2S, in some resolutions, in some frame rates, has a 14-bit sensor readout. 
Is the GFX100 too the same? Unfortunately, not not same sensor technologies. So actually, yeah, yeah. XH2S has a 14-bit reading. So this one is, uh, uh, yeah, basically the 12-bit. Even the HDMI, uh, low, low data via HDMI. Okay, so in all resolutions and in all frame rates, it's always 12-bit sensor readout. Yes, basically the 12-bit, yeah. Now, if you look closer into the menu, there's one mode, and the name is F-Log2 D-Range Priority. Now, I assume that the D stands for Dynamic Range. Can you elaborate a little bit about this, maybe not so secret mode, but what does it do exactly? This is, a, yeah, one more unique feature. So, as I said, mainstream, my recommendation is a 4K 60p. Right, with a uh, minimum rolling shutter. But uh, uh, someone wants to make it more wider dynamic range, so you can choose that menu to on, and the camera reading is a bit different. This is actually confidential, you know, like technology, but it can make it wider dynamic range, like one stop more or something like that. It's also important to say that actually this mode is not available in all resolutions and all frame rates. It's only in certain resolutions that you can implement this F-Log2 D priority mode. You know the sun. All your modern cameras are restricted to full HD up to 120 frames per second if I want to do a, a bit of a higher frame rate. And this is also the case here. Why is that? It's actually the limitation of the reading speed of sensor. Mm. By the way, if somebody chooses not to invest in CF Express cards, you also have another SD card slot. Am I restricted in any way if I wanna shoot in 8K, for example, or frame rates, or maybe the recording format? Of course, you can take the uh, old type of the format, uh, except for the uh, ProRes. So you can use the SD card for the other than the ProRes mode. But depending on the bitrate, maybe the higher, faster SD would be recommended. Like the uh, 720, 470, 20 uh, megabit BPS, the V90 is the recommended, like that. You also have a new autofocus mode, and the name is Tracking. And I tried it, and I really like it, because it's simply pointed at a, at a person or any object that moves, you press and the camera will track. This request for such a feature came from you guys or from users? Actually, the documentary videographer who, and uh, uh, some short filmmaker requested. But actually, the, our R&D team is developed before a long time ago. So actually, now it completed. So that's why we implement the, the function to this camera. Can we expect this? autofocus tracking function to be implemented in the XH2 or XH2S or T5 or XS20 with a framework update? So, of course, we can't confirm now, but yeah, of course, we, are, we will consider about the, yeah, as the latest technology. Let's continue to talk about autofocus and the XS20 has this auto subject detecting mode. You don't have to tell the camera if to put it on animal, on train, or airplane, and so on. But this camera doesn't have it. Why is that? The GFX, the po positioning of the product is different from the XS20. So the XS20 is made more for like the vlogger or something like more casual sh shooting, video shooting. So that's why we implemented the auto detect function on the XS20. But for the GFX102, it's more like the shooting cinema or kind of the documentary, whatever. So that's why we differentiate the, the feature. But of course, the, if uh, there is many Request. requests from the users, we will consider to implement the function. Guys, requests, please. That's <laughs> always very useful. Makoto-san, the video recording quality of this camera is really very nice. 
But the only thing that I can complain about, maybe sometimes the picture is too smooth. It seems to me, and I'm not a technician in any way, yeah, but it seems like the noise reduction is really, really working hard. Is there any way to disable noise reduction or to do something where the picture is a bit more organic? This is my personal point of view, but yeah. Normally, so digital camera needs noise reduction. But of course, if, if you choose the lower ISO, yeah, we, we, uh, the camera uh, not to reduce the noise, not so much. It's already, you know, less effective. And uh, you can also uh, choose of oh, like minus three, two plus three uh, for the setting. But uh, uh, disable, it's I I never recommend it. Recommend that. I'm so curious to see <laughs> one day what happens if you disable it because there are some cameras in this price range that actually allow recording with noise without any noise reduction applied, and then you get more texture. My this is my thought, but yeah, even even some camera can can set off about the noise reduction. But uh, actually, it it's not totally off. I think so. It goes up like I was an engineer who developed the noise reduction. So, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay, guys. Before closing this friendly conversation, anything else that you would like to add? Anything that I missed with my questions? Okay. So you you ask like about the CF Express or SD card and so on. So new feature. So finally you can record to SSD directory. Okay. That's also support like ProRes. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning this. There are also two very nice functions that I found very useful. One of them is the ability to reduce image size in the viewfinder itself, because the viewfinder is of a very high quality, but it seems so big and there is a, the ability to reduce it. And the other is the camera sub-menu. You can switch between the photo mode and the video mode. It's very clear and gives all the information that you need and more. You know, Dasan, anything from your perspective? Mm, to be honest, I didn't thought the, uh, I take the video with the GFX for five years ago when we launched the GFX 50S. But now we can, so I'm trying uh, the video function a lot. So maybe everyone uh, can try, uh, enjoy the kind of high quality video, which you never seen with the GFX 102. So please try this function. Last question from my side. Now that the camera was announced, can you sleep better at night? Mm, yes, every night. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. Guys, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.